The Sony a6700 is one of the best camera investments you could make because it's so good at everything. It's great at photography, videography, or even creating content. I'll be first breaking down some of my favorite features as well as the price and value you get with this camera. Then I'll be talking about some of the best use cases and what I believe the scenarios that this camera will best shine in. And then lastly, I'll share my thoughts about this camera to see if it's the camera for you or maybe you would wanna consider something else. So with that being said, Let's jump into the review. You gotta just press record. Let's talk about the features and the price of this camera. And I think the first two things I really wanted to bring to your attention is that this is a crop centered camera, but it's also a hybrid camera. A crop centered camera simply means that the sensor size is gonna be a little bit smaller than a full frame. Now, what do you get with a crop camera versus a full frame camera? Number one, you're gonna get more savings. The Sony a6700 is a $1,400 camera. And that's significant because if you invest in a very similar camera, just full frame, being the Sony a7 IV, that camera is gonna run you about $2,500. So for $1,100, you're gonna get a very similar image and you can use that extra money to actually invest into accessories. Maybe you wanna buy a light, maybe you wanna buy a mic, we wanna buy a couple lenses and things like that. But as far as the image quality you get out of a full frame versus a crop sensored camera, is really gonna be most noticeable in both low light scenario and conditions, as in the full frame will perform a little bit better in low light. And then lastly, the amount of background blur that a camera can give you. So if you put identical lenses, let's say you put a lens that has a 2.8 aperture on a full frame, and then you have a 2.8 lens on the crop sensored camera, the full frame camera is gonna give you just a little bit more background blur than the crop sensored camera. But in my professional opinion, it's such a little noticeable difference that saving the $1,100 is probably better for this camera. And the second thing that I mentioned is that it's a hybrid camera. This camera shoots 26 megapixel images and essentially that means it's just, it's gonna give you a really large resolution of a photo that you could either crop in if you need to or just for the amount of sharpness that you get. It's gonna be awesome, but you can get a lot of lenses with different focal lengths and really produce awesome images. But this being a hybrid camera, it's just as strong as a video camera as it is a photography camera. And so if you wanted to use this camera to, to shoot weddings, small business promos, creative videos, and things like that, it's gonna crush for that as well. And this camera shoots a 4K image with a 6K down sampled resolution. Essentially, you're just gonna get a very sharp video image out of this camera, even better than just traditional 4K. And this camera shoots up to 120 frames per second. So you have all the frame rates you need. There is a little bit of drawbacks in the sense that there's a little bit of a crop the more higher frame rates you shoot in. So if I go with 4K 120, it's gonna add a little bit of a zoom, but with this being a hybrid camera, just know that you can go deep in both directions and that makes it a really versatile camera. As far as other features go on this camera, it's nice that although it's a compact camera, that there's actually a view Finder, meaning you can use this to take photos or if you're taking video in the sun, you can get a really good accurate image from this viewfinder. This is the Sony ZV-E1, which is like a full frame, you know, more video centric camera, but it doesn't have a viewfinder. This is $2,200 and this is uh, $1,400. So it's nice that you get that as well if you wanna use it. Also just the button layout is so nice. It's so nice in the hands. This camera has a flip out articulating screen so you could flip it and if you wanna see yourself, you can do so as well. And I absolutely love that they have a multi-interface shoe mount, meaning you can get one of Sony's accessories like their shotgun mic and put it right on top. And literally with like no cables, you could have this lean little setup. This is Sony's 15 millimeter 1.4 lens and traveling with this setup was amazing because this lens is so fast. Putting it on a crop sensor camera is gonna give you a great look. Another scenario this camera camera will crush with is in vlogging. This camera has five axis in-body image stabilization, meaning that the sensor is going to stay stable if you hold the camera. You can get a really smooth image and really remove any and all jitters. Like if you're a run and gun filmmaker or creator and you like filming stuff like on the fly, it's gonna be very smooth because of that feature inside of the camera. This camera is incredible to create content with. Like if you're shooting YouTube videos like this, because it has the flip out screen and the autofocus is amazing, using a camera like this to film yourself is gonna be a breeze. And then another really good use case for this camera is actually live streaming or video conference calls. Just with the use of a USB cable, it's so easy to turn this into a webcam 
and I love that it produces a 1080 image out of it. One thing I would say about this camera that I absolutely loved was that it never overheated, that this camera is truly a prosumer camera. I've literally shot very long talks, like 45 plus minutes, and this just handled it like a champ from the back of the room. Having a camera that you know won't overheat and it could shoot way past 30 minutes, it really increases the possibilities and the different circumstances you would use a camera like this, uh, which is awesome. I would almost probably recommend two prime lenses and you can get the Sigma 16 millimeter lens to shoot YouTube talking head videos like this and then you can get the Sigma 30 millimeter lens, which is very similar to like a 50 millimeter, you know, nifty 50 look. Uh, it's gonna give you that same focal length and then you can get, you know, great headshots and compressed images with that. Right now I'm using a Sony FX30 to film this, but this is the 16 millimeter F1.4. So you're, you're gonna get a very similar image to what you're seeing right now with this camera when pairing it with the Sigma line of lenses as well. Sony sent this lens actually. It's a 70 to 350 millimeter zoom lens. And I was excited to test this lens with this camera because of how much it does zoom in. Using this when I was doing talks was amazing. Number one, the autofocus. This camera was locked into my eye like crazy the entire time. Having this paired up together was a dream. I honestly can't think of a scenario where this camera wouldn't shine. I traveled with this and I've used it in so many different scenarios and it's a phenomenal camera. And so it yields the question, who is this camera for? You know, I asked the question, what are you trying to do? And a lot of times the people are like, I just wanted to do it all. And my budget's 2000 bucks. Like I would say, get the Sony a6700. It takes phenomenal photos and videos. What you're getting sub $2,000 with a great lens and stuff, you're gonna be crushing with this camera. I'll put the links in the description below. And I would encourage you to check out those links because oftentimes you can find a used deal on Amazon on any of these cameras or accessories. And when buying something used on Amazon, most of the time they actually put a warranty on it. So you're actually taking no risk in saving some money. So I would encourage you to check out those links. The only person I would say to not maybe get this camera is somebody who does want full frame. You know, I love the Sony ZV-E1, which I actually did a review on. And if you wanna see the difference between the two, just click or tap the screen. And I can't wait to see you in a future video. Peace.